Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm late again. I'm late for a very important date. <coughs> and I was about to, I was about to step out of the house and then somebody rang. And what they do, there's a sort of a twilight zone. You know what people who defuse bombs for a living say that there's like a grey area, there's a, there's a white area where if the bomb goes off and you're outside of that area, you're, you're in the white area, the chances are you will survive. You might be injured but you will survive. And then there's a black area where you're so close to the bomb, if it goes off you're just going to be red mist. But then there's a grey area and that's the grey area they don't like, which is where if the bomb goes off you're likely to be severely life-changingly injured. <laughs> but not die. So they run through that bit. So I was in the grey area this morning, which is the area where if someone rings, they're not ringing out of hours with an emergency or at some diabolically outrageous time, expecting to get through to an answer phone to find out tomorrow's hours, but, but in the end get through to a dentist and not expecting to. And I wasn't in the white zone either, where the surgery is open and if they ring they get through to surgery. I was in that area where I was in the shower. <laughs> Getting out of the shower. And they ring at like a quarter to eight or something, you know. Um, just in the off chance that the surgery starts at six or something and that we're already there. So they get through to the tail end of the emergency service and then they say, oh, oh. Oh, I want to cancel my. I want to change my appointment. Can I change my appointment? And I'm no. I'm not in front of a computer at the moment. You come through on the emergency line. But I don't like to say to them, "Can you ring back?" Because what's the point of being on the end of a phone if you have to? All you do is just keep saying to people, "Yeah, no, I can't deal with you. Can you ring back another time?" So if I can possibly deal with their inquiry, by which I mean arrange for it to be dealt with then I do um, and so in one case it was a woman with toothache who wanted to come in so I told her to come in at nine o'clock huh? Huh? like I said the other day told her to come in straight away although we have got quite a busy day today I don't know if nine o'clock was necessarily the best time to get her to come in I mean from a surgery organizational point of view certainly from her point of view it's brilliant to be told to come straight in and usually we can jiggle things around, you know. Um, and the other one, uh, the other guy was uh, the bloke who just wanted to change his appointment. He'd had an SMS and an email saying come in on the 25th and he's away until 28th. So he just wants to s talk to someone just to arrange another date. So I've said I'll get Penny, our receptionist, to ring him back. Now, way to the, the clue to dealing with these is first of all to get the patient's name because usually with the patient's name the receptionist can do everything else they'll know what needs to be do, done pretty much already but if you don't get the patient's name then you're obviously you're very limited saying oh this guy rang and he said oh he's away till the 28th can you remember what guy what which one of our patients might be away till the 28th and of course they won't know and the alternative um, and the other thing you need to do is have some sort of internal communications uh, set up. In other words, you need to have a group on which the staff are all on, and which where the messages go out to every single member of staff, irrespective of whether it's relevant to them or not. Because, first of all, I mean, it could be relevant, because if we've got an emergency coming in at 9 o'clock, then the nurse will want to know that, because she'll need to sort of mentally prepare the surgery and herself for um, you know for fitting in this extra patient secondly um, they can ignore the messages if it's not relevant like if a member of staff's not coming in today then she can just ignore everything on the work group although they do tend to check it in case it relates to a time when they are working but the main thing is that you can then dump that uh, information so you dump it on the work group in, you know, by saying, "Oh, um, Mrs. So and So is coming in at nine o'clock. She's got a toothache." 
and that goes on the work group and basically then you can then forget about it because whoever needs to know and do things about that can can do things about that based on the work group and it comes up on their phone and that so they've got a list of things to do if you like when they get to work uh, based on what's gone on in the group um, <clears throat> we use whatsapp uh, which is very good for this sort of thing it's uh, it's like I mean most messaging programs are are pretty you I mean they're, they're all useful for text whatsapp does pictures as well which is sometimes useful um, you know it's, it's it's not all singing all dancing it's it is encrypted which I like not that that really means much but um, it's also uh, uh, I mean it doesn't you can't send V cards you know uh, virtual business cards and think details and stuff through it uh, it's it's a bit of a fluffy thing but the point is it, <clears throat> the information is the star in this sort of setup um, really all you need is a text program a thing that sends text just so you can dump the information anyway the other thing so that's that's quite good but it does mean it did mean that I ended up spending 15 minutes on two phone calls and it's gonna make me late for the first patient who might even be the one of the patients who was on the phone what else oh yes quality control troubleshooting we made a bit of progress yesterday we had we were having a problem with our crowns and the problem was that the crowns needed um, adjusting and I hate adjusting I hate adjusting crowns they should not not fit when they come and then they always I mean um, we never know we started having problems with the impressions so we've tried all sorts of impression materials we've tried putty and wash we've tried putty making a special tray then a wash um, we've tried uh, Impregum which they swear is hydrophilic which is the biggest lie in dental materialdom it's the most hydrophobic material you ever come across we've tried uh, blowing air on the preps as we syringe the light body around them found out that the three-in-one syringe wasn't powerful enough to blow the amount of air that we wanted so we had to I've had to get in some compressed air in tins to uh, to uh, get better impressions then we try uh, different impression materials and anyway I'll, I'll go over them uh, perhaps impression materials at a later day. the point was that um, you know we've had patients we had to bring patients back in not uh, get them numb again uh, re-prep the teeth um, retake impressions the, 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 the ground I fitted yesterday we had we got it back twice to retake impressions um, we've taken impressions in alginate because we've got a lab next door that can pour them up straight away to see how that works. Um, we use uh, routinely use uh, string, you know, razzle stipped in cord and all that, which helps. Anyway, so finally, finally, we think we've got some sort of decent technique for taking impressions. start of the British Grand Prix here and Watson is second on the grid and immediately moves into pole position anyway we were still having problems with not not with the well then with then we had problems having a chat with the technician about the the bite not well not the bite but I mean the just general the general shape and size of the crown you know we have trouble uh, with the color uh, the only way you can get a decent colour match is to get the technician to come in the surgery and have a look at the colour. They don't want to do that, you know, they don't want to take responsibility for making it the right colour. They'd rather you just set a colour and they said, yeah, well, we made it the shade guide colour. What more do you want? You know, and technicians are, my, my opinion, you know, my opinion is that the dental technical sector is, has gone back 60 years, 70 years, I'd say. You know, the Cockcroft years put the dental technician tr trade profession back so much because when I qualified, you know, we really, we still had like a lot of the old technicians from almost like pre-NHS days, uh, they, they had the sort of the ethos of, 
you know, making everything, and everyone was very optimistic about doing good, you know, doing really, really great stuff. If you want to see how much the dental technician trade has, has suffered, look in the Metrodent catalogue. Metrodent is their sort of their big supplier, and it supplies all, you know, it's got everything in it. It's got everything in it. It's got a sticky wax, now, all the stuff, all the technical stuff. It's all in the Metrodent catalogue, all the different plasters and all that. And just look and see what's in there and see what, and ask yourself whether your, your technician uses 1% of what's in that catalogue. <laughs> look through it and I tell you, you've got a window on real, real quality work, on the ability to do real quality work there because see, all the materials are in there. Now, all the tools of the trade to do real, real quality work. The sort that you know is done in other countries, other first world countries. Uh, the the real top notch uh, uh, aesthetic dental work. And then ask yourself if your technician can even make a lifelike crown. Can he even make a crown that looks like a tooth? You know, even under ideal circumstances, not even on a patient. Just say to him, like, here's an old model. Make me your best lifelike. You know, or does it look like? a piece of Wrigley's chewing gum that's just been squashed flat on a tooth. You know, is it... We Okay, let me just go back a bit, right, before I go off on one about the technicians, because the technicians are a sad case, because the DLA and Richard, what's his name, Daniels, let, let them down very badly in my opinion. They got a very raw deal out of the 2006 contract and they're getting decimated. They are. There's the independent technician, the real skilled tradesman is... Uh, being subsumed by uh, the uh, you know work workers from abroad and uh, and that's because crowns are crowns and bridges are uniquely um, you know susceptible to being done by people in remote locations. This impression material is designed you know it's so stable, so dimensionally stable once it's set that you can stick it in a rocket, send it around Pluto, bring it back, cast it up, and make a crown, and the crown will fit. That's how dimensionally stable it is, and you can't do that with alginate. Alginate, how many times have you have you had a chat with a technician and just watched all the alginates on his desk just drying out and generally slumping and getting bent because they're all they're all on the table upside down, resting on their heels, so getting bent out of shape, and thinking like you know, listen, listen, mate, can you can you not just cast up your alginates, please? Just, it's making me nervous, but this is a thing, you know. Cast up your effing alginates before we talk, or while we talk. While we talk, I don't mind. Cast them up. So, but not not crown a bridge. Crown a bridge, you can take an impression and or a couple of impressions and put them in a box and send them to China, and they'll arrive in China without any trouble at all. And a Chinese chap can make you your crown or whatever. And it's and technology is taken over in crowds. It's all CAD CAM now, and it was like six years ago. It was CAD CAM. Do you know what I mean? If you went to International Dental Showcase in Cologne six years ago, you will have seen CAD CAM. People scanning teeth, sending 3D data sets off to uh, America, where some spotty oik on a YTS trainee program was was designing a crown far better than any technician over here uh, does because that's all they do, they just do the design, they do it all day, they know the, they know the design. If they want to, right, they can scan, the. say they're doing an upper right six, they can scan the upper left six, if it's pristine, reverse it, and make the crown on the upper right six the exact identical reverse of the upper, the other six. That's how, you know, good CAD CAM is. But, you know, are we any closer? You know, I thought, oh, this is, you know, in a few years this will be here. This will never be here, this technology. This is, we are still, we are still creating <laughs> crowns out of mud <laughs> and sticks and sticking them in patients' mouths. Anyway, I've got off the subject a bit, which was basically how we did a fault finding on this. So we, we were finding that these crowns were not, uh, still not fitting. And of course the technicians hate it. You know, I, I got two technicians next to me. One of them really welcomes me coming back and saying, look, you know, this is the, you know, the, the problem with the, uh, the denture was you cut a sodding grate post dam in which ran across a hard pallet. 
and it's a partial denture so we don't do post dams on partial dentures do we especially not ones that are going to cut great holes across a pallet or, or you've put a whacking great lump of acrylic underneath that tooth that we are going to extract and how on earth do you expect her gum to heal back the right shape if you're going to put a thumb sized piece of acrylic underneath the tooth which is going to leave a withered like a, a great dent in her gum when it heals up you know all that sort of old fashioned silly buggery that they learn from other bad technicians you have to sort of sometimes you have to train that but he's keen to learn that and he, as soon as you explain to him why he'll do it like that and he's also capable of doing it the other way for all the idiots who want it the way that they've seen every other technician do it but the other technician the crown technician he is not at all keen to learn he's not he makes flat contact points and doesn't understand that contact points not supposed to be flat they're supposed to be tight and and bulbous you know he's he's uh, what we did was we had this problem with the crowns being a bit high on the bite so what I did was I said to him look I don't want these crowns back uh, the day before they're going to be fitted I want them back as soon as they're ready and then we'll what I'll do is I'll use your plaster casts and I'll mount them on my fully adjustable articulator using my bite and then we'll put the crown on and just have a look and try and work out why they're high on the bite oh did he not like that I mean did he not like that you know I mean you 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 you, the sort of face he made was the sort of face that someone makes when they've been pulled over for speeding you know and I said to him look this is not we're just trying to learn here I, I've got some crowns that are a bit high on the bite and what do they say they always say the same thing well, it fits the model it fits the model doesn't matter if you're a prosthetic or a crown technician they always say the same thing but well, it fits the model so <clears throat> as, though, as if that was it was that, you know they've been trained to think that that's the last word in everything that you know don't doesn't matter what crap you turn out right doesn't matter how many dentists complain and how much they complain about your work providing you can turn around and say it fits the model you're in the clear you're okay you're a brilliant technician to which my reply is always well I didn't cast up the model did I it's your model <laughs> But, you know, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, but really, that just to sort of to draw the shutters on the argument like that, but it fits the model, that what they're saying is, I don't wish to discuss this any further. That as far as I'm concerned, it's your problem, not mine. Once it fits the model, and it's out of the lab, I don't care if it doesn't fit. So anyway, we think we traced the, the problem. And the problem is, and, and that is because we articulated this crown, and it was again it was it was all right it was fine there's plenty of clearance in fact there's no sodding cusps on it i tried it in lateral excursion and he could have he could have put some cusps on it but he usually made his, his flat wrigley's chewing gum crown um which you know i mean i think they think dentists like this because uh you know and it's certainly true that i would rather have a crown that was low on the bite than high on the bite but but they you know they've taken this sort of stylized crown to extremes where the thing has got no um, no, no working side or non, no non-working side either. You know, there's no put a bit of articulating paper in uh, between the teeth, and there's blue marks all over the plaster teeth, and absolutely no marks at all on the crown in in either lateral excursion. So not that he knows what a lateral excursion is, to be honest. But um, anyway, it turns out I think it turns out that the um, the, the problem is with the temporaries. I think what's happening is that our temporaries are, the teeth are moving and certainly in the crown yesterday the, uh, the, the woman, um, her crown had come off and so uh, what had happened I think was her temporary crown, had, uh, her tooth had over erupted and so that's why it was alright on the, so he's absolved from making it too high on the bite really on the, um, on the technical side but I'm not absolved from making a temporary that um, probably was a bit too low on the bite and then fell off. So it's my fault. Don't tell him. For God's sake, don't tell him. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. He, but the point was he's off the hook. He's acting like he's been caught speeding. And really, you, you know, you don't... Do you need a technician like that? You know, you've got to work with someone, haven't you? You've got to be working against them all the time. And you certainly don't want someone who doesn't care. Right, I've got a rush. I've got a rush! Oh, my God! See you tomorrow. Bye.